Greetings, this is Pastor Eugene Gowan II of the Jeremiah Missionary Baptist Church. And I want to welcome you to our virtual worship experience where we're transforming lives through the Word of God. Open up your heart, open up your mind, and open up your life to receive a relevant and real word that will transform your life from the inside out. Come on and join us in our worship experience. Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Cowan, listen, welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. And I'm so excited. Amen. Our praise team is going to lead us in worship and lead us in praise. So come on, everybody. Let's lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, do me a favor. Hug that person that's in your house and tell them how much you love them in the name of Jesus. God bless you.
with together. Amen. And so we need your support. Whatever you can do, however you can give, we want to make sure those in Jeremiah, you know, amen, that the work of the Lord must go on. And we need your tithes and your offerings to continue with that work. When they're asking, what is the church doing? Not only are we going out and encouraging those in protest, but we're also making sure that we're back home, that we're taking care of our community. So beloved brothers and sisters, please sir, please now, uh, according to the generosity that's in your heart, please sow that seed, give that offering, give your time unto the Lord. Come on, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for each giver, and we thank you for each gift. Father, we recognize that everything that we have comes from you. We thank you, God, that you are our sustainer and that you are our keeper. We thank you that you continue to put a roof over our heads, continue to put clothes on our back, continue to put food on our table. You continue to provide for us. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you for being a healer. Thank you for being there for us, even in our darkest moments. For that, God, we give your name the glory and we give your name the honor. And we give your name and praise. God, accept our gift from our heart unto you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Hey, we thank God for each one of you. We thank God for your gifts. We thank God for your spirit, your blessing. We thank God for your support. And we thank God for your prayers. I just believe that if we're going to make it through uh, this COVID-19, if we're going to make it through the pandemic, if we're going to make it through the epidemic of racism that continues uh, to be in our communities, that we got to be protesters and we're going to be intercessors. We're going to be people who are willing to stand up and we're going to be people who are going to be willing to lay out before God and to call on his holy name. I just believe unless the Lord keeps the city, they that watch, watch in vain. Bless the Lord, everybody. It's time to get into God's Word. I need you, and I know I've been enjoying this time of sharing God's Word. We've been preaching through the book of Nehemiah. And I pray that it has been a blessing to your soul as it has been to mine. Today we're in Nehemiah chapter 4. Uh, we've been sharing some powerful and yet insightful uh, passages of scripture uh, from Nehemiah 1, uh, from him having his heart being broken, hearing that the walls of Jerusalem have been torn down, to be in Nehemiah chapter 2, from him going into the presence of King Exodus and, and asking uh, for, for favor, asking for God's grace on his life and him receiving that favor and grace and then going all the way back to the walls of Jerusalem and he spies out the walls and the people uh, that are with him, he makes a declaration, our walls are torn down uh, and it is a disgrace unto God. Let us reveal that they gather together and they want to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And just so last week we dealt with chapter 3 where we see that there's a synergy that is happening with the people. Everyone is building. Everyone is doing their part. Everyone is working. Everyone is building walls and building gates. And, and it, it seems like there's a momentum that is going on in this rebuilding of the wall project. And, and beloved brothers and sisters, I've been sharing these series of sermons on Nehemiah for a particular purpose because during this time, we ought to look at our own lives and look at our own situation and ask God, is it time to rebuild some walls in our life? And I specifically looked at some walls, our wall of faith. Where is my faith in God? I specifically looked at where is my uh, relationship with my family? We've also looked at uh, our finances. How is the wall of my finances? Is my house in order? And then we also looked at our fitness, getting our bodies 
amen, uh, in an optimal position because we know that our body is the temple of God. And then finally having some fun and enjoying life. Uh, do we have that emotional healthiness where it's not just all work and no play? And do we have time for enjoying each other and enjoying this abundant life that we have from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, family, listen. Today in Nehemiah chapter 4, we get to see that when you begin to progress, when you begin to move forward, when you begin uh, to start making headway, when you begin to start taking those steps to better yourself, when you start taking those steps to rebuild, that you will always have some opposition. So let's look at Nehemiah chapter number four, Nehemiah chapter 4. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you sustain us and that you are keeping us. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you would touch your word, that it would go forward and come out that void. Pull the sinner from the depths of hell, the backslide, the back of the right relationship. Strengthen the saints. Edify this your church. Lift up my Savior, Jesus Christ. But most of all, God, glorify your kingdom, which is in heaven. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 1. But it so happened when Sambalai heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indeed and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the armies of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they divide the stones from the heaps of the rubbish? Stones that are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and he said, whatever they are building, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break it down their stone wall. Hear, O oh our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you. For you have provoked you to anger before the builders. They have provoked you to anger before the builders. Verse number six. So we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. Now it happened when Sambalat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to close, that they came, they became very angry, and all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. And because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing. And there is so much rubbish that we are not able to rebuild the wall. And our adversary said, they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and caused the work to cease. So it was when the Jews, the Jews who dwelt near them came, that they told us ten times, from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Therefore I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall, 
at the openings. I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the leaders and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And as it happened, when our enemies heard it, that it was known to us that they had brought their flock to nothing, and that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction, and the other half held their spears, the shields, the bow, and wore armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall, those who carried burdens, loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked with construction and with the other hand a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built. And the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Whatever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us, and there our God will fight for us. The word of the Lord, it is already blessed. Listen, you can continue reading that chapter in your devotional time. For a little while, I want to share about how to handle discouragement in the middle of your progress. How do you handle discouragement in the middle of your progress? Beloved brothers and sisters, this is a very interesting piece that we find when we're looking at Nehemiah chapter 4. We see in chapter 3 they are uh, about their father's business. We see in chapter 3 that they're working diligently, that they're working uh, to make sure that each person does their part. We know those nobles who did not do their part and we, we see them moving with activity and synergy. We see them moving, making sure that the wall is being built. And when we get to Nehemiah 4, it gives us another lens, another glimpse to look at how the progression of the wall is going. We see in chapter number 4 that after they've gotten to a place where the wall is rising up, it's about halfway done. That's when you see the enemy begins to talk and communicate about what is going on. But another can I share with you, it's very important that you get this, that in the middle of your progression, you will have some situations of discouragement. Not only will you have people that will try to discourage you, but things will happen that will try to discourage you. One of the things that I've come to understand in this journey of faith that you have to learn how to handle setbacks, you got to learn how to handle your haters, you got to learn how to handle adversity, you got to learn how to handle when people are talking behind your back, you got to learn how to handle the struggles, the stress, and the strain, because the truth of the matter is, you're further than you were when you started. See, many times, beloved brothers and sisters, what we fail to realize is, yes, we're not all the way where we should be, but like Grandma used to say, I ain't what I used to be. In other words, I had some progress in my life. And can I share, beloved brothers and sisters, you got to learn how to celebrate progress, even if it's 
somebody do, even if it's just two steps, even if it's not all the way there, because many times we beat ourselves up and fall into self-sabotaging situations, all because we have not achieved our full potential. But, beloved, don't stop when you're halfway finished. You got to continue and roll to see what the end is going to be. Nehemiah chapter 4 helps us to see something. Oh, we see Sambalot in chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 1. He heard that we were rebuilding the wall and he became furious and indignant and he mocked the Jews and he spoke to all of his brethren and the army of Samaria and he said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they offer sacrifice? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stone from the heap of rubbish? The stones that have been burned down. Listen, beloved brothers and sisters, let me drop this on you. You know, many people will remember your past and not understand your future. In other words, the children of Israel, the reason that they're in this situation is because of their failure to continue to serve God. But can I share what I know about the God that you and I serve? What I love about the God that you and I serve is this, that even though we may fall down, that he gives us the ability to get back up again. Matter of fact, I serve a God that is not only loving, he's also forgiving. He's not also judging, but he's also gracious. We serve a God that cares enough about us that when we make a mistake, yes, we may have to face the consequences of our actions and face the consequences of our decisions. But let me tell you, he still loves us and he gives us grace and people who remember you when you messed up will try to throw that back into your face. And here it is, Sambalot, he's trying to remind them of you remember the rubbish, you remember the stones that were burned down and the reason that it was burned down is because you turned your back on God. Beloved brothers and sisters, let me share something with you that the enemy will always try to remind you of your past. He says, can they complete it in a day? He's mocking them. Can they finish it in a day? Can they rebuild it? And not only him, but Tobiah the Ammonite, he times in on it. He adds on to it. And he began to say, well, if the box runs up it, it'll fall down. In other words, what he's saying is that they don't have the ingenuity. They don't have the ability to build something strong enough to help them to survive. Beloved brothers and sisters, I want to share with you today that when discouragement comes in your life, you got to learn how to handle, how to handle the discouragement when it comes into your face. With people that you love, with people that have been with you, with friends that have been by your side, when family leaves you alone, you got to learn how to handle your discouragement. Listen, I want to show you in the text, Nehemiah teaches us something very powerful. Look at verse number four. Verse number four. This is what Nehemiah does. He hears them popping their guns. He hears them saying all of this. Can I share something? Let me pause for station identification. If you go talk about somebody, talk about somebody to God. Don't P R E Y, P R A Y. In other words, many people, when they're going through something, people will talk about them to other people. But if you see me going through something, baby, do me a favor. Talk about me to God. Tell God to fix me. Tell God to help me. Tell God to give me strength. And in verse number five, we see Nehemiah when he hears the opposition, when he hears the things of discouragement, he begins to pray. 
Listen, let me help you. Let me bless you today. When people are talking about you and not talking with you and are not talking to God for you, you better learn how to talk to God for yourself. Oh, help me somebody. I just got happy. It says in verse number four, hear, oh God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads. Give them as plunder to the land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity. Do not let their sin be blotted out from before you. For they have provoked you to anger before the builders. How oh, hold on. Nehemiah understands something. Nehemiah understands it's not his thing, but it's God's thing. He says, God, they think they're talking about me, but the truth is, God, they're talking about you. Uh, oh, help me somebody right here. What Nehemiah is suggesting to us is that as a child of God, when we put our when we put our destiny, when we put our future into the hands of God, any opposition, any one that comes to try to discourage us in our journey, that they're not trying to discourage us. The truth is they're trying to discourage God. Me, me, Amaya, me, Amaya, me, Amaya. He says, God, hear my prayer. Hear my prayer. Because I need you, I need you, God, to do something on our behalf. Beloved brothers and sisters, let me share something with you. That when you pray, you seek God. When you pray, you're telling God you trust God. When you pray, you tell God, God, I got confidence in what you already told me. In other words, look at the text, I want you to see this. It, it says, verse number six, it says, so we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. And the people had a mind to work. Can, can, I, can I help you today? The only reason, the only reason, the only reason that discouragement and opposition comes is because you have finally made up your mind to put in work. Oh, help me somebody. Don't touch your neighbor in the house. You can touch them in your own house. Say, hey, put in the work. When you put in the work, you will have opposition. When you put in the work, when you put in the work, it's going to be folk that's going to talk about you. It's going to be folk that's going to doubt you. But the, the text said, the Beloved brothers and sisters, they were halfway, halfway to completion. They were halfway finished. They were working, and when they got halfway done, that's when the enemy came and tried to discourage them. Let me tell you something, beloved brothers and sisters, that I don't care where you are in your journey of faith. I don't care where you are in your journey of life as a child of God. We have a common enemy called Satan. And you better know that he cannot outwit you. He cannot outsmart you. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 says, we are aware of his schemes. We know what you do. Listen, I love this. I love this. I love this. It says in the text. It says in the text. And they were halfway done. Look at verse number seven. It's going to bless you. Verse number seven says, verse number seven it teaches us, it says that now it happened when Sambalai, Sambalai, Tobiah, the Arab, and the Ammonites, and the Ashadites heard that the walls were being restored and the gaps were beginning to close, that they became very angry 
And all of them, look at that, all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Okay, y'all better help me up in here. Listen, they already tried to belittle their abilities. They've already said they're not going to do it. Who do they think they are? Or uh, that they build it, the foxes will tear it down. They already said you, you you can't do it. You can't make it. You you're not smart enough. You not you, you don't have the skill set. You don't have the ability. But he and God is just it's just them saying you can't. That now I want to stop you. Listen to this. It says in the text that that Samuel, Tobiah, and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdod all heard the walls of Jerusalem were being restored. The gaps were closing, and they became angry. Can I share something with you? Everybody will not be happy with your success. Everybody will not be grateful and thankful for what God is doing in your life. You look at it. The text says that they were upset, that they were angry, that they were mad. It says, and then the guy to close the gate as the wall was being restored, that they were angry. And then watch this. Your haters will have a hater party on you. They'll serve hater race and have hater salad and hater sandwiches just because you are progressing and all you've done is made it halfway. You ain't even finished yet. You ain't even finished with your degree. You ain't even finished yet. You ain't even finished getting your finances together. You ain't even finished yet. You ain't even finished losing that 50 pounds. You ain't even finished yet. You haven't even finished. You just halfway. Watch this, beloved brothers and sisters. They left you when you were down. But now that you're on the road, they can't stand it because now you are moving the arm where they are. And can I share with you, you're going to have some friends that's going to be your hater. You're going to have some family that's going to be your hater. You're going to have people that will not like you because of who God is making you to be and who you are becoming and how you are fulfilling out your destiny. Listen, listen, listen. The text says, that they wanted to create confusion. Mm. Listen, they wanted to create confusion. Listen, if you're going to handle the distractions when they come in your life, you gotta pray, you gotta focus on the Lord, you gotta keep your mind stayed on Jesus, you gotta keep your mind stayed on the task at hand, you got to make sure that you keep yourself prepared. Like I want to show you something in verse number nine. It says, nevertheless, we made our prayer to God and then we set a watch against them day and night. Listen, beloved, write this down. I pray, then I watch and I pray. Number one, I pray then I watch and I pray. I pray, then I watch and I pray. Listen, to what Nehemiah does. Nehemiah strategizes. He has a strategy together. God will give you the divine strategy when the enemy sends you distraction. He says, this is what I want you to do. I want some of y'all to watch the enemy. And then I need some of y'all to pray for the enemy. Pray for God's favor. Pray for God's protection. Pray that God will cover us. Pray that God will be with, be with us. Pray that God will be by our side. And let me share something with you. That sometimes, sometimes, and I told you, you're going to have some folks from the inside that are going to try to discover you. Look at verse number 10. It says, Then Judah, the strength of the laborers failed. And there's, no, there's so much rubbish that we're not able to build the wall. Hold on. We're halfway there. We're halfway finished. We're almost completed. And here's Judah. Now Judah means praise. And Judah is having a pity party in the middle of the working day. 
They're saying we can't do it. And look at verse number 11. And our adversary said, they will ne neither know nor see anything till we come into the midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. Beloved brothers and sisters, let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. So the enemy is talking to you. You got to watch how you entertain the enemy. Judah working on the wall in the daytime, but hanging with the enemy at the night. They, they, they're working on the wall with everybody in the daytime, but when they go home, the enemy is there and they're listening to what the enemy is saying. And the enemy is saying, we got to destroy y'all. Y'all don't need to go back to work. Y'all don't need to go work on the wall. Y'all are going to be destroyed. And here, here it is, here it is. I'm looking in the text and it says, so it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came, they told them ten times, look at verse number 11, from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Can I help somebody in here? Do not allow the chitter chatter of the enemy stop you from building your wall. See, I love what Nehemiah does. Look at verse number 12. It says, Then I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and I set people according to the families with their swords, with their spears, and with their bow. And I looked and I arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid. Remember the Lord is great and he's awesome and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughter, your wives, and your houses. Come here somebody. I hope that ought to help somebody right in here. What he tells them is that first of all, I got to get you into position. If you're going to handle and overcome the discouragement of the enemy when the enemy comes upon you while you're progressing, you got to know Get in position. You gotta know how to pray. You gotta know how to pray. You gotta know how to pray. Then you gotta know how to get into position. They get into position. And I love what Nehemiah said. He said, Hold on. Listen, I won't have to y'all to work. I want some of y'all to watch. But when you watch, you gotta be ready to fight. If you watch, you gotta be ready to fight. If you work it, you keep working. If you're watching, you gotta be ready to fight. Beloved brother, the problem with many of us is that we'll watch, but we won't fight. Hey, let me tell you something. Is it your family worth fighting for? Is it what you desire in life worth fighting for? Is it your dream and your destiny worth fighting for? I know what Nehemiah says. He says, listen, fight for your brother. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. And one thing, I don't you want, I don't want you to forget He's awesome. 
You got to pray. You got to get in position. And then the text says, verse 15, and it happened. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God has brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work, so that it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction, while the other half held their spears and their shields and their bowl and wore their armor and the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who build on the wall, and those who carry the burden, loaded themselves so that with one hand they walked at construction, and with the other hand they held a weapon. Every one of the builders with head swore, girded at his side, and built, and the one who sounded the trumpet stood right beside me. Beloved brothers and sisters, the text lets us know that when you pray, when you watch and you pray, when you get into position, and also it lets us know that you can stand on the promise of God. See, when the enemy heard that their plot came to nothing, woo, let me help somebody up in here. Whatever the enemy tries to do, it will come to nothing. Beloved brothers and sisters, the scripture tells us no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Listen, beloved, you got to know how to trust God, to lean on God, to believe in God, to say, God, I, I know that you got my back. I know that you're on my side. I know that I love you. I know that you want the best for me. And the text says that the labor continued on. The labor will continue on. Verse number 19, it says, Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive. And we are separated far from one another on the wall. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us, and there our God will fight for us. So we labored in the work. And half of the men had held spears from daybreak until the stars appear. At the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servant stay at night in Jerusalem, that they may be on our guard by night and our work party by day. So neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, except for every one of them took it off for the washing. Nehemiah says, you know what? Just to let them know that I'm not just here trying to give orders. I'm going to stand with you and all the men with me. We're going to stand together with you. In other words, we will fight with you. And we will fight for you. Beloved brothers and sisters, our country has lost a national outcome. John Lewis, House Representative, passed away just on yesterday. And listen, he showed us what it meant to stand with Dr. King, to stand for civil rights, to stand for humanity, to stand with the people, to see the victory and the power of God. I love the text because what Nehemiah says is when we stand up, we don't stand by ourselves. But we, when we stand up, the God that we serve, he also stands with us. Beloved brothers and sisters, can I tell you this morning that God will stand with you. That God will stand with you in the midst of your darkest day. That God will stand with you in the midst of your darkest time. That God will stand with you in the midst of your darkest night. Can I share with you the darkest of night is just before the break of day. And beloved brothers and sisters, as we get ready to meet y'all, let me tell you when the comes because that you guys sometimes remember that God is on your side. Oh my goodness, if the Lord is with me, I can handle it. If God be for you, he's more than the world when it comes to you. That's why you can learn how to stand.
stand. That's why we can learn to stand in the midst of it all. In the midst of the discouragement. In the midst of the trials. In the midst of the heartaches. We are almost finished. We are halfway done. We can feel the discouragement. We can feel broken and down. That's when you got to say, I know I am. I'm halfway done. Discouragement comes. I pray. 
how I walk and pray. And then I stand on the promises of God. He promised. He promised. He never leave you. He promised, beloved, that he never forsake you. He promised he'd always be by our side. Listen, beloved brothers and sisters, when discouragement comes, don't forget what God promised you. I'm leaning, I'm depending, and I'm God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer today. I pray that something's been said to encourage you on your journey of faith. Listen, beloved. You may be facing discouragement right now, but I want to tell you God already promised you victory. God has already promised you that you're going to overcome. God has already promised in His Word that you are the head and not the tail, the first and not the last. He said, greater is He that's in you than He that is in this world. Beloved brothers and sisters, if you're not saved, this is a good time to get saved. Get your relationship right with God. The scripture says that you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and God raised Jesus from the dead, that you shall be saved. God bless you. God keep you as my prayer. Listen, dear my family, don't forget to sow the seed. Don't forget to be a blessing. Remember the church needs you, just like you need church. God bless you. God keep you.
I want to thank you for joining us in worship. You can connect with me, Pastor Eugene Cowan II, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And connect with our church family on www.jeremiahnbc.com. I would love to see you in person. Join us for worship, 4519 West Villard, Jeremiah Missionary Baptist Church. And remember, it's better to have Jesus and not needing than to needing and not having.